All right, so this knife that's video is going to be a review of this knife. And as you can see, this is our Rough Rider knife. Specifically, it's Rough Rider model number RR1817. And this is a modern slip joint from Rough Rider. So it's a non locking knife. It does have a back spring, but it has some modern features like a pocket clip, a G10 handle that's screwed rather than pinned, and then an opening hole versus a nail nick or long pull. One interesting thing about this knife is that the back spring setup is kind of interesting, kind of unique. So it has a strap of metal that goes almost the whole way here and actually functions as the blade stop, but it's not actually the back spring. The back spring that forms the tension is a separate piece of metal. It's actually connected. So it's not, I guess, technically a separate piece of metal, but a separate kind of arm that comes off of the same back strap here. So when you open the knife, it presses that spring back, forms the half stop, and then tension to full open there. So uh, kind of an interesting setup, kind of a different setup than you might be used to if you're used to traditional slip joints. Then another thing here is that it does have a blade stop. So rather than a kick that hits against the back spring, the kind of behind the ricasso area of the blade hits that stop pin and makes it so you're not going to have blade wrap on this knife and it allows for this type blade shape that doesn't have a kick like a normal slip joint. Uh, so definitely some modern features and some kind of unusual features in my opinion. Now, uh, it has also, like I said, a G10 handle. It's a blue and black G10 with some machined kind of milling here. So gives it an interesting look and also has screw construction, as you can see, and a clip. So you can clip this in your pocket. And one thing that I was really interested in when I bought this knife was whether it was one hand openable. It looks like it's made to be, but you never really know. A lot of times companies will add one of these opening holes, but uh, it's not really functional as one hand opening. It's just, you know, in place of a nail nick. But this knife is one hand openable. So you can press out and then you have to kind of wait at that half stop and then push it the full way. Now, because of that half stop, you can't really do that in one motion. Your thumb will slip off and then you can see it kind of swings back. So I don't recommend that. I haven't caught myself doing it, but I think that it is possible that you could. So instead I recommend you push it to half stop, then you kind of reset and push it again. And you can see you can still slip off of it for sure. So I don't really know why they added a half stop to this knife. It seems not only counterproductive, but straight up unsafe. Now. I'm not a huge half stop person, even in traditional knives, in true traditional slip joints, but I just don't see the purpose of it on this knife. You can give this nice knife a nice strong spring like it does have and have it, you know, have a rounded tang so that you can open it the whole way with one hand without having to stop there and without having to worry about it swinging back at your palm when you're trying to open it. So I definitely would not have put a half stop on this knife. Um, the other downside to this knife is that because you do have to press relatively hard into that opening hole to one hand open it, even though this knife didn't come with blade play, it came pretty solid, um, it now has some pretty significant blade play. And part of the reason for that blade play, I mean, part of it is from pressing to, to open it because you do have to press pretty hard, like I said, but part of it is because once it developed some blade play, I wanted to, you know, take it apart and, or at least just adjust this pivot. And I have been completely unable to do that. Uh, so what happens is when you try to turn the, the pivot screw here, the other side of the pivot just turns with it. And I have tried about everything other than welding something to that far pivot. I have uh, glued something on, it doesn't work. I have used a rubber band to try to hold on to it. I have um, tried to kind of pry open the scales to put, you know, negative, I guess, pressure on that and uh, try to hold it there while you, while I unscrew it. And none of that has worked at all. So 
Uh, there's really no way for me to take that blade play away if I can't get this screw to actually turn in relation to the other screw. They just both turn. So it's pretty unfortunate because even though the blade play doesn't really matter, uh, it's just something where I, I wish that I could fix it. Um, the other thing here is that this clip sits pretty high. Now, I'm not someone who is super big on having a low low carry or deep carry clip, uh, but you should be aware that probably over an inch of this knife is going to be sticking out of your pocket. So a pretty significant amount. The other thing is I haven't tried because this has been enough of a hassle itself, but it doesn't really look to me like this clip is, is reversible or even removable. So uh, as for reversible, it, it definitely isn't because you can see there's no cut out over here on this side for the clip like there is on this side. But I'm not even sure if you can remove, like actually remove these screws. Now they're screws, so you would think so, but you would also think you could remove this screw. So who knows if you can remove that clip, but you definitely can't switch it. So I was pretty excited about this knife when I first got it. Uh, it's like $8 on Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and it seemed like a pretty good deal. I was happy to get a one hand opening modern slip joint. But with these issues, I can't really recommend it. Um, and I, I gave this knife a lot of shots. I really, really tried to, to adjust that. I cannot get it to adjust. Um, I don't like the blade play, even though it's not really you know, practical. And there are just some downsides to it, like that half stop. The half stop was definitely a bad design choice. It just, I don't see any reason to have it on this knife. So, even though it's very inexpensive, I just think that there are too many downsides, even at the price of $8, that there are better options for about $20, maybe $30. So um, this is the Rough Rider number 1817 or RR1817. And even though I really wanted to like it, just not a huge fan of it. But if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. And you can also check out my social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.